Hello guys and welcome to blockchain plugin tutorial series where we'll be discussing and building various aspects of the blockchain plugin and how you can utilize blockchain as a technology inside your games. We'll be also building very simple smart contracts and using them to drive our game logic for both multiplayer and single player games. So first of all uh, what we need is we need to enable the plugin itself of course. So I'm going to enable some uh, free and only free uh, plugins like Auto Size Comment, AJR Pro will be helpful for any game mechanics. The blockchain plugin itself, of course. Uh, there is a Color Wheel plugin, which is also a free one, and we're going to use it. Then from other stuff, probably nothing of this sort. Graph formatter is a very useful one. Uh, low entry extended library is also a very useful library of functions. Mm. And I think that's everything that is really necessary for this to work. I'm going to enable one more plugin that is not required to run anything. It's purely cosmetic and it runs uh, only uh, in the editor. It doesn't affect gameplay at all. It's called electronic notes, it's just making uh, the note connections a lot more pretty. Okay, let's just restart now. And yes. Okay, and we've, we have restarted. This is the default third person example content. There is nothing more to it. I just changed uh, colors of the folders by setting a color that I just created. Colors that I usually use to color code certain aspects of the folders. <coughs> so if you hit run, you see that there's that third person character, he can jump, land, walk around. That's it, right? You have uh, this directional walking and running uh, and basic camera control. Okay, so we want to do some blockchain integration. So let's make a new folder. Let's call it blockchain. And this is like a root parent folder. I'm going to give it a color of blue. And inside here, we're going to make uh, some uh, sample folders and classes. So first of all, let's do blue prints. Uh, blue prints, okay. Blue prints is going to be coded blue. And we need uh, first object I'm going to create is going to be a save game object. So because we're going to be using cryptocurrency addresses and keys as our identity for any logic that we're going to be driving, we need to be able to preserve this identity and not randomize it every time we are using it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a p underscore blockchain library. You can do it through a um, blueprint library. Uh, oh, wait, this is the save game, right? So this would be b wallet save game. Uh, so we can now build a library or we can build everything inside, for example, game instance or other class that is accessible uh, to everything to actually use the blockchain. But what I want to do is I want to just build a library that is globally accessible. Let's do a blueprint function library, b uh, blockchain library. And this, okay, no typos. Uh, let's open those two objects. So the library goes here. I don't need this anymore. I don't need this. And the save game goes here. Okay, so for the save game, I only need one variable, which will be called wallet key. And wallet key is of standard type, which is byte array. So I have to change it to array. And does it have to be Instantiative, I don't think it doesn't have to be anything. So I got it, now let's go to the library. And I got this particular save game object that stores this one value. So I want to make three functions. One is wallet exist. Second will be wallet create. And last one will be wallet read. Okay, so uh, let's start with creating wallet. We can check if it exists after we create it. So uh, wallet create, uh, we want to have an input. The input will be name of wallet, or just wallet name. And it's going to be just a string. 
And what we want to do, we want to create save game object. So this is creating an object inside our memory and it is not being collected by garbage collector if we do something with it. Uh, so we're creating of our class, so save game uh, object uh, wallet save game, right? And now we have access to all the variables inside it. So we got access to my variable that I called wallet key, right? So I want to set this wallet key. But to set this wallet key, first I need to create it. So I want to uh, go here and inside cryptography, um, I have a lot of functions, including ECDSC, which is uh, responsible for creation of um, public and private key. So we want to generate a private key. Mm, there's other function for it or not? Uh, no, it's only this one. Okay, so we are creating a random uh, private key which is being used to uh, calculate transactions and we're going to do a branch and if it is successful true and uh, then we want to get this object right reference to it and we want to set this value inside this object so now uh, from this object that we created we want to save game to slot so this is literally saving the game into a slot on our hard drive. So we want to use this wallet name that we created previously, connect it like this to make it all pretty. Okay, a user index is just important when you're running on a console or something that is using uh, different users. Um, okay, and this will create uh, the save game uh, with our crypto key that we just generated. And this save game is a local save game, so no one else has access to it except you. So only if someone has access directly to your files, uh, he can steal the key from you. So we want to do now return node. And for the return node, we want to have a success value. Uh, we want to have a success. And if something happens on the way for example the key wasn't generated successfully because of some lacking of i don't know platform we are using then we want to return success false and nothing else can fail in here really so this is the only thing that can succeed or not do we want to return the key as well uh, this is the creation so no we don't want to we just want to create it uh, so now we got wallet create, we want to check if wallet exists. So we want to check if wallet exists of specific name. So let's call it the same wallet name. And we just want to say, does save game exist? And we're just saying, does this save game exist at all? And if it does, uh, then we want to um, return this value. So if it does exist, we want to load it. So to load it, we go into wallet read and we can also add some keywords like wallet key, crypto read, load. Uh, yeah, that's enough. And we want to also add the name. So wallet name, we are consistent with this naming. And uh, we want to load save from slot and once we get this object this is a save game object so we have to cast it unfortunately to our save game uh, to wallet save game so we have to do that to get the proper class we could be using just a blueprint uh, interface, but doing interface to read a single value is just an overkill. So we're just getting this, we can get <clears throat> the created and saved key. Uh, get wallet key. And we can do return node and we want to have also a success. Uh -huh. And if the cast is successful, we want to return this key. And if it is not successful, we want to return an empty key and successful 
false and loading as a function always succeeds even if this save game doesn't exist it will just return an empty class an empty class will fail the cast so it will go through here so now we have those uh, three values <coughs> we can test them out uh, inside well anywhere right because this is a blueprint uh, library so we can call it anywhere so just to make it as simple as we can we're going to go in our uh, third person character we're going to open it and we're going to try to read it here so the mouse input gamepad input movement input jumping we don't need touch controls um, okay uh, so let's do here begin play on begin play does uh, wallet exist and let's call it wallet and you know what let's actually make it a variable called wallet name and let's make it by default wallet okay so we now have this wallet name wallet so if it exists then we want to load wallet wallet read uh, I call it read but I type load and it still found it thanks to the keywords uh, we want to just read the wallet and if it doesn't exist then we want to create wallet uh, with the same variable name and on successful we want to read it immediately uh, and on false we want to do print string and say fatal error couldn't create wallet and this should never really happen but we're going to have a fail save for everything just in case because you never know like different platforms different different environments could result in different things okay so then we read wallet and on success what we need to do from this wallet that is really important is to store it probably we can always read it uh, using uh, wallet read but we want to store it just for convenience reasons and we want definitely it to not be replicated it must be only local so in multiplayer game what we would like to do here is to say um, local controlled and we would like to also know if it's player controlled so if it is local player uh, and only if it is locally controlled player character we want to actually do this because we don't want to do it for AI for example AI don't need specific wallets they all can use just single wallet so let's do this uh, let's maybe collapse this to a macro local player true and we can do false as well okay so if local player then create wallet do this to that we generate the key we store it locally we generate public key so we need to generate public key and after getting the public key successfully we can generate wallet uh, Generate Ethereum address from public key. And it's a very long function, but it's self-explanatory. So now we're taking this public key that we created from private key and we are generating the wallet. And depending of this thing's success, if it's false, then print string failed to generate address. And if true, Oh, we can actually even take this entire thing, cut it, append to address dot error semicolon and error message, and we'll know exactly what happened and why. And if it is true, then what we want to do, we want to just this promote the variable and player. Uh, wallet address mm, 
maybe key name instead of wallet name it will be harder to to miss it with this one uh, okay so this entire thing is now we can collapse it and just call it wallet management oh it didn't rename wallet management okay so we're doing this wallet management on begin play um, and what we can do uh, just to debug it we can do print string and do again append client wallet semicolon and this wallet address and we want to print it to screen uh, for two seconds is enough but let's print it in like green so it's a different color and let's see if it works so if i hit play now it should generate a private key from this private key it should generate uh, a public key and from the public key it should generate a wallet address and print it out so alt p playing wallet address and there we have it 0x002 okay so this is my uh, address not the key uh, but this is a valid address and this is an ethereum address meaning that it can be used in any ethereum based network so it is valid for both polygon ethereum test nets uh, look so uh, you know avalanche or any other uh, like binance smart chain any any address any blockchain can, can use this address and it, it will be valid for it so we got this wallet so if i now play i have this wallet it is being stored on my disk and in my memory so if i end play and if i restart the play i should get exactly the same wallet instead of a new one so let's make sure it is the same uh zero x zero zero two f and the uh, end is d750 so it is the same wallet so we have successfully created identity for this local player and we can now use it to drive our further um, functionalities uh, so that's it for the first episode uh, and see you in the next one